My name's Daniel Bushell, cover-up and continuation of torture under Obama in this show. Shocking police brutality caught on camera. Hunger strikers torture. And Hollywood lies hit new heights. Police just broke this man's leg. Unable to move, he begs them to stop as they beat his bruises. Police torture has become so regular, YouTube has weekly roundups of the most horrific, unpunished cases, and that's only what was caught on camera. Activist Eric Dreister, thanks for joining us. Under Obama, has this got worse? Well, it has absolutely gotten worse. The fact that we have seen militarized police taking the place of what used to be community law enforcement, quote unquote, liberals in the United States don't like to admit. It's very easy to rail against the Bush administration for their rampant criminality, torture and uh, illegal wars and illegal surveillance and so forth. But when it's the Obama administration, somehow the conversation changes. And that conversation even includes kids. This video shows children are still regularly being electroshocked in the US, in this case, 31 times in a row. The Behavior Research Institute has changed its name to the friendlier Judge Rotenberg Center, but children there are still deliberately starved of food and electrocuted. Psychologist Dr. Jeff Kay, thanks a lot for coming on. Any proof whatsoever on benefits of electrocution? I agree with the UN Special Rapporteur against, uh, for torture, uh, Juan Mendez, uh, who condemned using the so-called contingent shock therapy on uh, with the uh, uh, children. It's, it's uh, crazy it's to force people in a very punishing, brutal fashion to, uh, to do what their minders are telling them to do. That's all it really is about. And that, of course, is a form of torture. A report finds torture in US jails is absolutely rife, burning by toxic chemicals, held in stress chairs. Guards give vicious beatings using electric cattle prods and tasers. Jail bosses even admit they, quote, enjoy causing pain. You'd rather be in a Mexican prison? Absolutely. That's the worst prison uh, jail in the world. You'd rather be there? I'd rather be there than here. We you treat you worse than the Mexicans in, the, in Mexico? Yeah, that's pretty bad. Prison torture in the States is, quote, strikingly similar to GI's abuse abroad. The White House calls Abu Ghraib isolated incidents, but identical torture, hooded, robed, wired to electricity, has been captured at jails across the US. It's the recommended pose from the US Torture Manual, AKA the Human Resource Exploitation Manual. Stress positions known as self-harm, combined with sensory deprivation, that's hoods and goggles, plus electroshocks, cause most, quote, physical weakness with least evidence of bruising. But the Pentagon admits it's hiding hundreds of photos of US torture, even worse. According to Senator Ron Wyden, take the worst case and multiply it several times Times over. There are US soldiers raping Iraqi women, plus, quote, every indecency and abuse. Abu Ghraib victims instead of stars and the whitewashed official report for stripes. This series is artist Clinton Fine's reaction to the massive torture cover up still going on. I love you. During torture and in cells, this song's blasted at deafening levels round the clock. One FBI officer describes the US torture sessions. And a kiss from me to you. I entered interview rooms to find detainees chained hand and foot in the fetal position on the floor, with no chair, food, or water. Most times, they had urinated or defecated on themselves and had been left there for 18, 24 hours or more. Interrogators the day before had made the temperature in the room well over 100 degrees. The detainee was almost unconscious on the floor with a pile of hair next to him. He had apparently been literally pulling his own hair out throughout the night. Well, we don't torture people. L let me say that again to you. We don't torture people, okay? Come on, so, George. We don't torture people. One victim was beaten so viciously for three years by US military that he, quote, lacks the capacity to assist in his own defense. Torture has turned him into a vegetable. But only one person who the White House now admits they wrongly accused suffered all 12 techniques from the CIA torture manual. Kicking, beatings with a collar, prolonged stress positions, confinement in a box, nudity, exposure to freezing temperatures, 
sleep deprivation over seven days at a time, prolonged shackling, threat of ill treatment, forced shaving, starvation and waterboarding. He's now so brain damaged he can't recognise his mother's face, but the Pentagon file calls his health good. It takes torture supporters just 10 seconds to see waterboarding is both medieval and produces unreliable info. Everything completely goes on you when you're breathing water. You, you, you can't think about anything else. In these amateur waterboardings uh, in the media, they're not even getting near where waterboarding starts. They're just getting a little water in their sinuses. It's when the water starts to push down and you start to gasp for air. And when you take that gasp, that's when it overrides your, your, your epiglottis. It will start pouring into your lungs. And you start feeling it right about here. And that's when you start to panic and you start to struggle. And as you start to struggle, you start pushing on your bindings. And then if, you know, if you've got a you start kicking your feet together and then you start violently spasming. When the Senate found torture had produced no useful intelligence whatsoever, CIA counterterrorism boss Jose Rodriguez and his assistant panicked. They rushed to an industrial shredder, destroying 92 tapes of Zane and other victims being brutally, pointlessly tortured. This email between his CIA bosses explains the cover-up. As Jose said, the heat from destroying is nothing compared to if the tapes got into public domain. They would make us look terrible. But instead of prosecuting for destroying evidence, Obama promotes them. The woman who helped Rodriguez gut the tapes just got a major promotion to his former job, putting her in charge of drones and other secret death programs. The CIA's teamed up with Hollywood to portray that woman in her 50s as a young model whose torture finds Bin Laden. This self-proclaimed true story lies to its viewers so despicably. In fact, torture did not help find him or anyone else that senior senators have even launched an official complaint. Zero Dark Thirty director Catherine Bigelow, who also won an Oscar for The Hurt Locker, where heroic Americans help stupid Iraqis, is dubbed the Lenny Riefenstahl of our age. Riefenstahl directed Triumph of the Will, in which she glorifies German brutality. The film won many US awards. Dear Catherine Bigelow, the propaganda amendment just signed into the law by the president legalizes direct funding of pro-government messaging and media without disclosure aimed at American citizens. The more pro-military your message, the more help you currently can get. From personnel to sets to technology, freeing up millions of dollars for the gigantic ad campaign that a film like this needs to win audience. In a time of darkness in America, you're being fated. But your career has taken the path of that other female apologist for evil, Lenny Riefenstahl, who glamorized the National Socialist. Now you will be remembered forever as torture's handmaiden. Dr. Jeff Kay, how do you make a nation blindly accept mass torture? TV shows like 24 and others who uh, would show that torture was in fact an acceptable form of behavior. <laughs> Tell me what you know about the Helix Protocol. In Zero Dark Thirty, we don't have that. We have something, uh, again, another, from my standpoint, even farther down the line of horror, in which torture is a way to move up the bureaucratic hierarchy. I mean, it becomes uh, a question of others. There's we, and then there's the other. I mean, during World War II, and I know that Russia was victimized in pre precisely by this kind of thought, uh, uh, where fascist thought took... Um, the idea that uh, Slavs and Russians were something less than human. Uh, the Japanese did the same thing to the Russians and the Chinese and the Koreans. So, uh, and the Americans, of course, have done this to numerous peoples around the world. Yeah, does life in a torture state affect people unconsciously, though? Guantanamo, for instance, there's a hunger strike going on. Um, men who uh, feel desperate about their very lives, and yet the population as a whole goes about its daily business as if uh, nothing is happening. And I, I don't uh, hear that there's a dismay about it, but if you do open up, and I talk to a lot of people in my job, um, you find that people are aware that there's a, kind of, there's a subliminal at, or even more awareness to this, and underneath it, I think you have higher rates of uh, 
depression, anxiety. The Pentagon's now force-feeding Guantanamo hunger strikers simply because it calls prisoner deaths, quote, bad PR. But leading lawyer Marjorie Cohen, thanks so much for joining us. Why is force-feeding also classed as torture? They have a tube that they stick in the nose and down into the stomach, incredibly painful, no um, sterilization between uses. And uh, people call it, uh, people say it's excruciating, no anesthesia, and it does amount to torture. Um, moreover, the American Medical Association, the World Medical Association, the declarations of Tokyo and Malta all say that doctors should not participate in force feeding detainees if the detainees understand the consequences of refusing food. We're even hearing doctors telling interrogators victims physical and psychological weak spots to help them torture. George Bro Mickham, you represent Zain Abu Zubaydah. Thanks for joining us. Is that happening? Medical personnel were participating in the interrogation of, of prisoners and assisting in the torture of prisoners. It's taken top investigator Jason Leopold years of research to get through Bush administration's secrecy and reveal the facts of torture. Jason, thanks for coming on. How is Obama comparing to Bush? It comes down to this, Daniel, is that this administration is not transparent. Obviously trying to hide something. What we saw during the Bush years when, the, when, when, when George Bush and his uh, uh, administration uh, lack transparency. They were hiding uh, uh, crimes. We're still hearing stories about individuals certainly being uh, turned over to countries and other governments that still engage in torture. Uh, we don't know what's taking place on these boats prior to uh, b you know being sent to uh, you know the U.S. for charge or trial. Propaganda war to repaint torture as something noble is on. Mix that with a secrecy even the Bush administration couldn't match, and the righteousness of Obama's election campaign sounds more and more like torturing the facts. This is the Truth Seeker.